Today I have the James Donkey 619 mechanical keyboard in for review and testing. Now this was sent in via Gearbest, so we'll go through everything that's included. I've listed out on the screen the main specs for this particular keyboard. You can see we have the Gatoron switches and we have a choice of four different types. I'm looking at the brown ones. Unfortunately, the manual is in Chinese, so we can't get much use out of that. We do get the plastic key puller included. We have a decent quality micro USB cable. This has braiding on it as well. And you have a Velcro strap if you want to wrap it up to take it for traveling. Now looking at the keyboard, aluminium top plate. and We have the rivet points on the top. As you can see, we have a shorter, more compact keyboard with this one. No numeric pad. Moving in a bit closer, you see that the caps and scroll lock has a sort of a shield over the top to prevent the sort of LED from directly glaring at you at an angle and you see that the keys are quite scalloped there's quite a, a large groove on those more so than most of the mechanical keyboards that I've looked at not really a problem just a slightly different key design and the font is also a little bit different to most of the ones that I've used at the top you see you have access to the media functions you just press the function button and the key to access those and on the sides we have the plastic yellow areas with flip out back feet and this is the other side on the left that's got the James Donkey name on it unusual name a bit different now, this is a view of the top section you'll see the port there for the micro USB styling and design and this is going to be subjective I think it looks okay it looks better in person than it does perhaps on the pictures on the underside we have uh, plastic back and we have silicone or rubber feet but I would have put some feet on the back riser sections just to provide a bit more stability. It's pretty stable but that would have made it even less likely to slip around. Now I tend to have it with the uh, back feet raised to provide a bit more of an angle. You can take them off, they have uh, hex bolts on them but if you do that, then obviously you're going to have to come up with a solution to stand it stable because it's uneven. This is the micro USB port and it's good to see they've come up with a custom design so that it only fits in one way and it's very secure. Otherwise there's potential to mash up or damage the port. You can use a different cable with this but you won't get that solid slotting in mechanism and a view there on the top. So it's a bit concerned about the micro USB because it can get more easily damaged but they've done a good job on that one. Put the key puller in to take out the keys. You can see we have a black plastic surround, it's not clear on this one. And that's the Gatoron brown switch. So you have a choice of switches. And a quick look here, we have the four way directional cursor keys. You can engage that by using the function button and pressing the W. And a side profile view with the back feet extended. It's not a bad looking keyboard actually, it's a bit different, a bit unusual. And looking at the key, these are um, the keycaps. Uh, the print is decent on these and I find it quite sharp. They're not quite as thick as the Rantapad keyboard that I use. Now the software that you get included that you can download, it's not actually in the box, is pretty basic. You can change a few settings on it and check for a firmware update. You don't have to use it. What I'll do now is show you a demo of the lighting effects on the keyboard.
That was a quick demo of me typing just to give you an idea of the sound. I quite like it for typing myself and I do touch type. I find it a good keyboard for typing. That will depend on the switches though. To save you the hassle of wandering around online to find the keys to change the settings on the keyboard, I've put them on screen now so you can have a look at those. You can change all the settings via the keys. Now it's time to come to some conclusions with the James Donkey. A couple of points for me. I would have liked the uh, rubber or silicone feet on the back section as well would have prevented it slipping around a little bit more on a hard surface it's fairly stable but it could be improved in that way also I would have liked to have had an anti-spill design I like to see that on some keyboards fairly easy to implement and the other weak point would be the user manual which is just in Chinese unfortunately although it's not a difficult keyboard to get up and running with on the other hand plus points good tactile feel and overall build quality nice quality braided cable with that design on the micro USB tip Decent choices of light modes if you like the colour, which is more towards a yellow orange. And I also think it's a nice keyboard for the price in a budget segment. This isn't an expensive mechanical keyboard and offers good value for what you get included in the package and the overall quality. So let me know what you think of the James Donkey if you've used it. And I'll catch up with you very shortly in my next video review.